Good morning and welcome to Junior Church. We are so glad that you joined us here today. Take a nap. Here, quick. I mean, uh, I am anyway. Uh, we have a good day planned for you. Um, and apparently, Brother Matt has taken this opportunity to take a nap. I'm not sure what's going on here. Careful the hammer. Brother Matt, we're uh, starting junior church. The camera's rolling and every... Brother Matt. Hmm. What? What can I do? I got an idea. Need some uh, amplification. Brother Matt! That, that didn't work. Um, a minus. Uh, I got it. I got it. I know what'll work. E equals MC squared. Let's see here. Pair. Okay. No, no, no. This is the one. tried to do because I'm running out of ideas. Where's my paper? Ugh. Tony, you bought that pen? Was it labeled world's loudest clicking pen? That is insanely loud. That's all it took? Was the little click of the pen? What are you talking about? That's a loud pen. I, all the stuff I tried to wake you up. Waking you up is like raising the dead. Only Jesus can do it. Did you mess up my hair? <laughs> it's a long story. Hey, I'm raising the dead. Is that a pun because today's lesson is about raising the dead? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. We're going to continue our series on uh, story or uh, signs of our Savior. And uh, excuse the mess, there was an issue. But... We're going to continue our series. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to have some fun. It looks like Brother Matt has decided to raise from the dead and join us so we can start Junior Church right now. Yeah. This place is a mess. Well, if you only knew. Welcome to Junior Church Song Time. How you doing? We had a pretty... Pretty big week last week. Yep, Harvest Day. Friday. Harvest Day. If you could just see all the straw that we got out of the floor. God bless the people of Victor Baptist Church. I tell you what, we had some hard-working ladies back here that helped get this all straightened up. Shout out, thank you uh, to all those who helped clean up and made it a good day. But you know what? Brother Matt's got a point. I'm tired. We're tired. Exhausted. So we got this nice uh, speaker here, Bluetooth uh -huh. speaker. Uh -huh. All in one. And uh, and we thought, instead of all that, yeah. we're just going to take time to enjoy the music today. We're going to play a song that we sang on Sunday morning. Our young people, yeah. if you were here, maybe you sang it. I don't know. Did you sing? Yeah, you were right there on the couch eating the cereal. Did you sing it? Maybe you did. They're always hey, the bus, cereal, aren't the they? bus is outside. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know if the bus is there or not. Anyway, but if you were here, you sang it. But this isn't this isn't the kids in junior church. Yeah. This is uh this is back. Last year, Brother Matt and I sang it. Miss Judy was here. So uh, enjoy. Yeah. He's able. We're just going to hit a button right now. Let's crank the jams a little bit. He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able. He's able. I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the broken hearted, and he sets 
the captives free. I'm free. He makes the lame to walk again, and he calls the blind to see. Pinky boo, he's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Nice. Good job. You know that just never gets old. Those good singers, right? There. They are. God they bless are. Them. God bless you. Thank you. Good job. All right, young people, it is Bible time. I've got my Bible. Hopefully you've got yours. And we are going to be in Luke chapter number 7 today. Luke chapter number 7. And we're going to continue, as we said earlier, talking about the signs of our Savior. Uh, we've talked about some great miracles that Jesus did last week. Uh, he healed that man who was lame there on his bed and couldn't get up, his friends lowered him down. Uh, before that, we talk about how he uh, brought in all, helped Peter catch all those fish and different things like that. And he's done some great things. But I tell you what, in today's lesson, he's probably going to do one of the greatest, most amazing things that Jesus ever did while he was here on earth. He healed a man of something that nobody else in the world could possibly heal. We're going to talk about what that is. We've already kind of alluded to what it was, but, but it's just amazing. You know, of all the medical advances uh, that we've made and all the things that we've been able to do, we've never been able to do what Jesus does uh, right here in this lesson. So let's read Luke chapter number 7. We're going to start in verse number 11. The Bible says this, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the son of his mother, and, he was, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, or the coffin, the, the, where they were carrying the, the young man. The Bible says and they, that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us, and that God hath visited his people. What an amazing miracle we see here. Just this one phrase, ready? Look in verse number 15 real quick, if you've got your Bible. The Bible says, he that was dead. That is an amazing phrase to read. Because usually when you're dead, you're dead. But when Jesus came to this funeral, he put death in the past tense. And you know what? He's going to do that later in his own life. And we're going to see that play out. But what an amazing miracle. He that was dead. Let's look at this story and what it has to teach us this morning. The Bible says that Jesus and his disciples uh, came to a city called Nain. The city of Nain uh, was about 15 miles southwest of the, the Sea of Galilee. You might remember the Sea of Galilee from when Jesus was teaching and he came to uh, Peter and, and asked him to take his boat out and he talked from the boat for a little while and then he told Peter to take it out and he caught a great draught of fish or just a, a great multitude of fish there. Uh, well, he had been there and he had been in a town called Capernaum and he had healed uh, a servant uh, for a centurion, a person who the, the, the people of the town really looked up to. He had built a synagogue and done some great things for him. And so Jesus uh, healed his servant, and it was uh, a great uh, miracle that he did there. But now he comes to this city called Nain. And as he approaches the gates of the city, and that day the city would have had a, a kind of a wall around it to help protect it and to help defend it uh, from anybody who would try to, to, to hurt the people or, or raid the people and things like that, and, and just to keep them safe. And so he comes to the gates of the city, and as he comes in, he's coming in, uh, a procession makes its way out. Uh, and back then, they didn't have cars and, and hearse and things like that to, uh, at funerals. They just carried uh, the coffin uh, to the cemetery, and, and there was a group of people walking with this lady, 
And the person that, that was being buried was her only son, and she was a widow. And in those days, uh, it was uh, very important for uh, the family, the, 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 the dad, to take care of the family. And, and then if he passed away, then the son would take care of his mother. Uh, the children, rather, would take care of their mother. But in this case, this lady only had one son. And her husband had passed away, and now her son uh, had passed away, and she was going to be all alone, no one else to be there with her and help her uh, throughout uh, the day and help her throughout her life. And, and she's coming out, and no doubt she was very, very sad. And Jesus saw this on her face. And, and there in verse uh, number 13, the Bible says that the Lord saw her and had compassion Owner. You know what? God loves us so, so much. And you know, when we hurt, it, he, he knows. And, and He has compassion on us. God loves us so much that He doesn't want us to hurt. Right, do we hurt in this life? Absolutely. We have, bad things happen uh, every single uh, day. But you know what? When bad things happen, God loves us enough to have compassion on us. And, and he, he, whether He's teaching us a lesson or whether He comes and helps us through a hard situation, no matter what we're going through, we can go to God with our problems, and He doesn't ignore us. He doesn't send us away. Uh, many times uh, the Bible says that when Jesus looked on the people and when they were hurting and when they were sad, uh, we see this again when He goes uh, in, in John chapter 11, and he, and he heals another man of death. He raises another man from the dead uh, named Lazarus. The Bible says there that He looked on the people, and the Bible says He had compassion. And in the shortest verse uh, in our Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus wept over these people because He had compassion, because He loved them so much. It was God's love and His compassion that caused Him to send His Son. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It was God's compassion toward us. He saw sinful man, and He saw man trying to do the best that he could and thinking he could be good enough to get to heaven, and He knew we couldn't. And so God loved us enough and had compassion on us, so He sent His Son. And That's what happens here with Jesus, because we need to remember this. Jesus is God. And he looks at this lady and, and he sees her loss and he sees her grief and he sees her mourning. And the Bible says that he had compassion. You know, one of the great things about Jesus and the great things about God is this. When he sees us hurting, he doesn't just leave us alone. He doesn't turn a blind eye. No, he always does something. Again, uh, whether it's uh, help us through the problem and, and, and give us encouragement or, or send someone to help encourage us, whatever, he doesn't just leave us there in a sad state, and that's exactly what happens here. He has compassion on this lady, and he tells her, weep not. He tells her not to, not to cry. Uh, don't, don't, don't weep. He said something great is about to happen. And the Bible says Jesus came over to the bier. That would be the coffin uh, that this uh, young man was in, or what they were carrying the coffin on. And the Bible says that he, he touched the, the bier, and those who were, who were carrying it, they came to a stop. And Jesus spoke just a few words. He says, young man... I say unto thee, arise. And that's where we see that great verse, He that was dead. Now all it took was Jesus speaking, and this young man who was dead is now alive. One, one who was not living is now made to live. And the Bible says he began to speak. The young man woke up and he began to talk, and Jesus takes him over uh, to his mother. And no doubt she was so amazed at what Jesus was able to to do. The Bible says that a fear or a reverence, a, almost like, what is going on? They were just so amazed at what Jesus was able to do. And then they glorified God because they realized there was only one who had the power over life and death, and that was God. They realized that Jesus was God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says at the end of verse number 16 that God hath visited his people. You know, that's a, an interesting saying because if you go back to, to Matthew chapter number 1, whenever the, uh, the angel comes and announces Jesus' birth there to Joseph, he said he's going to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. It was interesting that they said God had visited His people because God literally had. Uh, there was Jesus, God incarnate, God in the flesh there with them. And he was the only one who could heal a person from death. You know, I said it earlier, we've made some great medical advances. We've wiped out so many diseases on our earth by medicine and doctors and things like that. But you know what? There's one thing that's always been final, 
and that was death. But when Jesus came in, he was able to heal and raise those uh, from the dead. But you know, this also is a picture for us. The Bible says this in Ephesians uh, chapter number 2, verse number 1, it says this, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. The Bible describes us that when we're in sin, that we're dead and not living. But you know what? Jesus came to give us life. Jesus came to not just give us life, but eternal life. I said it earlier that the Bible says that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, uh, in, in Romans chapter number 6, let's turn over there real quick. The Bible uh, describes for us uh, that, uh, that when we were baptized into His death, and the Bible says, Therefore we were buried with Him by baptism into death, like, that it, like as Christ uh, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should we walk in newness of life. You see, we were dead in our sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and in God's eyes we were already condemned to that place called hell. But when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible says He raises us again in newness of life. In 1 Corinthians it says we're a new creature. If we'll just put our faith in Jesus Christ, if we'll just ask Him again, He says that if we'll just believe in Him, we'll not perish but have everlasting life. If we put our faith in Jesus Christ and we ask Him to be our Savior, Romans chapter number 10, I mentioned Romans there, uh, chapter number 6, just a few pages over in chapter number 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. He says this, if we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came and paid the price for our sin and then rose again on the third day, he said if we just believe that, And then we confess to God, God, I know I'm a sinner. And I don't deserve heaven. I I, I know I'm dead in my sins. But God, I believe that Jesus paid the price for me. He died in my place and I'm asking Him to be my Savior. I'm I'm repenting of my sin. I'm asking forgiveness and I'm trusting Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven. The Bible says this in verse number 13, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He says, we'll be saved. And you know what? The great thing is, this young man, he woke up and he was the same young man. But Christian, can I tell you something? The Bible says we're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We become a new creature. We're no longer the the, the creature uh, that, that wants to serve self, but we want to serve God. And that should be our heart. That should be our desire. We said, read Romans chapter number 6, verse number 1 earlier. The Bible says that we're raised in newness of life. We have a new life before us. It's no longer a life that's focused on the the temporary things of earth, but we're focused on the eternal things of heaven. Young people, can I tell you this? If you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, you're like that young man. You're, You're dead in your sins, but He wants to raise you to new life, and He says, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is call on me and ask me to be your Savior, and I'll do it. Christian young person, can I tell you this? God wants us to walk in new life. He doesn't want us to be the same. He doesn't want us to be the same disobedient young person. He doesn't want us to be the same selfish young person. He doesn't want us to be the same sinful young person. He wants us to serve Him and love Him and love others and share the love of Christ to all those who are around. He raised us for a reason, and that's so we can share Him with those uh, who are around us and let them know the love and the life changing uh, power that he has for them. God bless you, young people. Congratulations to our winner. Way to go. Thank you for sending in your answer, even on our special day last week. Uh, We we still give out prizes, even on big days. Harvest. 
day. Harvest day. You might be able to see uh, over that way. Is that right? Over that way, you can see the edge of our display. Uh, because we still have a promotion going on. Yeah. Want it? Want it? Want it? Children. Right. Who have a heart for the Lord. And you're like, what's that all about? Come to Junior Church Check and find it out. out. But in the meantime, we need to get to the most exciting part of Junior Church every week. Ready? Question of the week with Brother Tony. That's it. That's right. That's me. You can send in your answers to 717 639 6536. Is that right? 717 739 639. 739. I said 6. Oh, my. Uh oh. Sorry. Let's try again. 717 739 6536. I knew it was wrong as soon as I said 639. Just I don't, didn't feel right. Just didn't feel right. Anyway, 739 6536. After all these weeks, you think I would know that? Yeah, definitely would think so. Levi knows it. Good I don't job, know. It. Anyway, send in your answers, or as always, you can turn them in here in Junior Church. There's a white basket as you leave the room, or you can hand it to a worker if you know the answer to this question. Mm. Jesus and his disciples were traveling. Mm -hmm. He healed a man of death. It's amazing. Talk about a healing. Oh. Healing him from death. He healed a man from death. What city? Were they traveling into? They were traveling. What city were they traveling into when Jesus healed that young man from being dead? If you know, also known as raising him from the dead, uh, I guess yeah, I could yeah, say yeah, it yeah. that way. What, what city were they traveling into when Jesus raised the young man from the dead? If you know the answer, send it in to 717-739-6536 or turn it in in Junior Church if you're here with us in person at 1030 on Sunday morning. The name morning. of that city. The name of that city. I don't know, but if you know, you can send it in. Uh, hmm, maybe we gave a clue. I don't know. But if you know, send it in, and uh, you could be on the wheel next week, and maybe you'll be receiving a prize. What's up? I'm feeling a little more awake now. Yeah? Yeah. But I did notice there's an awful big mess here. Oh, if you only knew why there was a mess here. Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering why there's like frying pans and giant speakers. You, you were sleeping. And I tried using all of this stuff to wake you up. No, you didn't. I did. For I was real? Banging lids. No. Hey, hey, right in your face. Hey, hey, I had a dream about him earlier. Yeah, <gasps> no, that wasn't a dream. Oh. Yeah, no, that was really me. And then all that. The little click of the pen woke you. I don't know how, yeah. that's all it took. Well, that was pretty insane. Looks like you got your work cut out for you here. So well, have fun cleaning this up, Brother Tony. No, no, this we'll is- We'll see y'all later. This Bye. is your fault. You stay here and help me clean. Wait, this is, that, is that my leaf blower? Yeah, don't even ask how what? I got it. Anyway, here, take this home. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>